What's up, Max? How you doing? Welcome to the live. Um, so first off, shout out to the fans at Rolling Meadows because for showing me love because every time I went out to one of your games this season they always shouted me out and stuff like that <laughs> so uh I appreciate that and then congratulations um on your personal accomplishments this season being ranked 16th in the country on ESPN as well as the number one player in the state a gold medalist this past summer and then first team all state and then to wrap it up msl conference player of the year so congratulations on that thank you i appreciate it of course so how's the coronavirus life been um it, it, it's not been too bad to be honest i've been relaxing i've definitely you know gone outside i shot some hoops in my driveway run around my block but i do keep myself occupied um especially with e-learning i'm trying to do my best to stay in school obviously and do the work um I don't, i'm not really very bored i know i do puzzles and everything but Obviously, it's a crazy time we're living right now with this whole virus, but I'm just trying to make the most out of it. Yeah, no, definitely. It could definitely get boring sitting in the house all day and stuff like yeah. that. So, when did you first start playing basketball? Um, okay, so my parents first put me in like a rec league, like first and second grade. Um, that's when I really started playing basketball, and then ever since, I've kind of played it for the rest of my life, obviously. My parents, are, um, they both play basketball, so we have a basketball family, so it's kind of been a part of me for my whole life, but mm -hmm. I first started in, like, first and second grade. Oh, okay. So, your brother Cam, he was a freshman uh, this year also at Rolling Meadows. What is it like being on the, getting to be on the court with your brother? Do you guys get competitive at home with, like, stats? And uh, be honest with me, does he give you buckets in the driveway? Um, I mean, okay, well, first off, it, it is fun to play with Cameron, obviously, on the team. It's been kind of a uh, – we've always looked forward to it. Before I was even in high school, we used to play high school together. So it's kind of fun to just uh, have fun with him on the court. Um, and then at home, like competitiveness, we don't really compete, I mean, that much with stats and everything. We just want to win. That's just mm -hmm. the main objective. Yeah. Um, and then outside, when we do play one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, he'll score every now and then, but – we know in the end that <laughs> I win every game. So. <laughs> okay. So I feel as though a lot of people, the one part of your game that people underrate, I think, is actually your bounce. I think a lot of people yeah. underrate your bounce, and I've witnessed your ability to just come out of nowhere, block shots, as well as get up there and throw down dunks. So when did you f get your first in-game dunk? My first freshman year. It was like the end of freshman year at home first thing getting dunked that's what happened but yeah uh bounce wise and athleticism wise i've always worked on just being stronger in my lower body and base just being able to have a second bounce or get higher rebounds obviously playing above the rim and dunking mm -hmm. um and so on so i just want to make sure i'm in the best athletic shape i can be and obviously with that comes my ability to jump off the ground and i think that's pretty pretty valuable a valuable thing for me and i think it's grown as the year has gone on obviously with my lower body getting stronger me getting in the weight room when i could before this whole virus thing but i mean i think my athleticism has taken the next step no definitely i agree so you're a five star like i mentioned before and every game you know you always have that target on your back there's always somebody who uh, wants your spot so how do you keep composed and handle that pressure per se uh keeping that elite status always on the court and just balling out every game. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, every time I play on the court, there's a lot of people who come to watch and obviously a lot of people who come to try to get in my head or whatever. Mm -hmm. But obviously, my goal is to not give them attention. You know, I have a task at hand is a basketball game and my goal is to win. So I'm not going to go out of my way to make sure that the opposing fans who are yelling at me, like, here. Like, I give them attention. That's not what they deserve, you know. I don't want to give – they want attention. Like, they want me to look at them and say something. Um, but that's not, I'm gonna, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stay focused and just be able to do the best I can um, on the court. And obviously, you know, I know a lot of people expect a lot from me. But mm -hmm. for me personally, I just want to play the best I can. I yeah. mean, if that means I score 10 points and we win, that's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, like, it's not all about scoring either. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people think I should score 30 points a game, 40 points a game. But, I mean, if I have 10 points, 20 rebounds, and 5 assists, and we win the game by 15, that's all, that's yeah. all I can ask for. I mean, yeah. just the goal is obviously in the end to win, just to win as many games as possible. I want to do as much as I can to win. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not going to let outside pressure, outside expectations of what people think I should be doing or how I should be playing affect me. Yeah, I mean, I can even say from watching a lot of, 
I mean, a lot of people expect you go to watch a five-star. They expect somebody, oh, he's going to take every single shot. And, you know, I can even say from, uh, I remember the first time I went to film you, I was like, wow, he doesn't even take that many shots. Like, he should take, like, I'm surprised he doesn't take more shots. And, you know, you're really very unselfish superstar on the court. Uh, definitely a great passer and stuff like that. So I agree with you on that point. You're very unselfish and, you know, you embrace that. It's more about the win than my stats, which is, yep. you know, one of the best part, which is an amazing part of your game. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, you know, talking about people in the stands, I remember you guys played Fenwick and there was this one guy in the stands who just kept saying, come play some real competition in the EYBL. Yeah. So, like, what do you have to say to people that doubt that talent in the UAA? Because, you know, you played in the Illinois Wolves UAA this past summer. And what do you have to say to people that just doubt your abilities overall? Um, I mean, in general, just doubters in general. I mean, it's kind of crazy how people sometimes will sit behind a screen and just, you know, feel free to say whatever they want about you. I mean, yeah. the thing is that people don't really know what it's like to be me. Like, you really don't know what it's like to be anybody. You need to walk, like, a mile in someone's shoes before yeah. you actually know or you can actually comment or judge them. So, I mean, I think a lot of people who just hate in general, there's just no reason for it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't get the point of it. it there's yeah. no point. You don't understand what it is to be me or anybody in general. If you're hating on anybody, you don't understand what it's like to be them. Yeah. You don't know what they're going through. I mean, it's just, there's no reason to hate. There's no place for negativity. And, I mean, just in general, with the hecklers and the stands, like you said, at Fenwick, I mean, he's really, he's, what, I don't even know. He's an old, not old man, but middle-aged man hitting on a 17-year-old who's just playing basketball. Yeah. At this point. I mean, what are you getting out of that? Yeah, like, no, definitely. I don't understand the point of you trying to yell at me in the middle of a game. Like, if anything, you look dumb. Like, yeah. the person yelling at me looks dumb. It's, everybody noticed the person. You even remember it now. Yeah. Everybody noticed what he was doing. Yeah. Like, there's just no point. You're making, like, you're, you're, you're looking at yourself, making you look, uh, look stupid. Like, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, in terms of, like, Under Armour Circuit, like you said, um, the UAA, I think, is really underrated. I mean, I don't really understand why people hate on the UAA so much. I mean, EYBL is EYBL. I mean, everybody loves Nike. Yeah. Like, who doesn't like Nike? Yeah, um, no, definitely. But, I mean, it's basketball. It's, it's really just basketball. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, Under Armour is no worse than Nike. It, yeah. It, it's the same thing, except... One's Nike and one's Under Armour. Yeah. It's the same competition. Everybody is playing the same competition. Everybody's working hard. Everybody's trying to get to college. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get to the next level. It's the same exact thing, except one is Nike and one's Under Armour. So I really don't, I don't see a difference in any of them at all. I mean, I don't know why people think Under Armour is so bad. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I got the opportunity to film at both um, things. I'd say there's just as much competition in Under right. Armour. It's just the same. And uh, could you repeat, there's something you said, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. There's something you said that I wanted to talk about. All right, maybe I'll think about it, I'll come back to it. Thank but um, just for the next question, so what's your favorite basketball moment? Oh, what I was going to say is, is that, speaking of that, you know, like you said, there's always somebody that thinks, um, thinks they know something that they don't about you, you know, and like you said, you can't really judge people because you don't know what their life is behind the screen or behind the court or whatever the case is. And, you know, you even, you balled out that game. So someone can say whatever they want, you went yeah. off that game. But on to the next question. So what's your favorite basketball moment? Um, my best basketball moment that I've ever had is no doubt winning a gold medal in Brazil mm -hmm. um, with the Phoebe U16 team. That, that was just the best feeling ever, you know, just being on the court, hearing the buzzer sound and, you know, we get to walk out on the stage with the national anthem playing in front of everybody, and we have our gold medals on our necks. I mean, it's just, it's just a great feeling. I mean, I'll remember it forever. My first ever gold medal when I was 16 years old. I mean, you can't really say you're a gold medalist at 16. That's yeah. Not, that's not very often that you hear that. So, um, winning the gold medal is probably my best moment that I've ever had. Yeah, no, I can only imagine uh, what goes through your head in that that scenario. And my next question was actually going to be like, so what would, could you, like, elaborate? Uh, what is it like being at USA Cam? What is it like winning that gold, gold medal, being a different country? Like, could you just elaborate on that? Like, what's that? Yeah. what that's like? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, going to USA, it's obviously a really proud moment. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. in USA right now. I, yeah. I, I work in USA all the time. Yeah. I mean, just being able to 
say that you're a part of USA Basketball representing your country. It's just, it's it's a huge thing for me. Yeah. But obviously, when going to USA Basketball, especially in the trials and everything, it, it can get stressful sometimes because you just want to make the team. Yeah. In my case, um, I, I just wanted to make sure that I wanted to make the team and win the gold medal, but mm-hmm. it's obviously stressful. It's really competitive. Yeah. Um, it's really high level, and it really teaches you how you have to do the little things in order to stand out from the rest. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like I did that at the trials. I made the team. And then, obviously, traveling to another country to play basketball was, was a feeling like it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, and I'm walking around in Brazil just to play basketball in front of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so it was nice to see also just in general, just the difference of cultures in, like, the United States versus Brazil. Yeah. It, in Brazil, the place we were in, it wasn't as, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, as nice as it is here. So mm-hmm. we get to kind of reflect on how lucky we are to live in this country. Definitely. And how great this country is and how lucky we are to be here. Um, so just being in another country, you know, just embracing the culture and then at the end of the day trying to play basketball to win a gold medal. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. That, you know, a lot of times we take for granted what we have and, I'm sure with that experience, it was really awesome to get to see two different worlds and how basketball is just such a a global game. So this past summer, you got invited to Steph Curry camp as one of the top guards in the country. You're there, and then Steph draws up a play for you, and you hit the shot. Like, what's going through your head in that moment? Yeah, um, so it was really nice. We we were doing a scrimmage before the day before our game. Um, we were doing a scrimmage and Steph Curry called timeout, drove a play, and I happened to be the scorer in the play. And so it was kind of funny because he basically ran a play that he runs with Golden State. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I ran the play, I made the shot, and it was just it was just crazy to see his face and obviously, you know, yeah. just seeing him, how happy he was that I made the shot and how he drew up the play and how it worked. I mean, it just felt really good that Steph and Curry decided to draw up the play for me to hit a three-pointer. And yeah. it, was, it was just a really good feeling. Yeah, no, I can't even imagine, like, you know, Steph Curry changed the game of basketball with the three-pointer, so. Yeah. That's definitely a cool feeling. So, do you have a pre-game ritual that you do before every game? Um, I don't do anything too crazy. I just listen to music. Um, I always eat a Jimmy John's sandwich, uh, like, four hours before the game. It's just a normal thing. I always mm-hmm. eat Jimmy John's before the game. But, I mean, in general, just, like, pre-game ritual is just listening to music, just making sure that I'm locked in and making sure I'm focused on the game, Mm -hmm. analyzing the game, just making sure that I know and I'm prepared to go into the game and obviously do my best to just win in general. Yeah, no, definitely. So, Jimmy Johns, if you're watching this, which you're not, give him a sponsorship. Is Is there a particular significance to your jersey number? Oh, I mean... No, I don't think there's really a particular one. I mean, I just always started with 12. I mean, Mm -hmm. when I was younger, I had 12. And it just happens to be that um, that's been my number for a very long time. I know my brother Cameron, he's 24, which is double my number. Yeah. So I think that's where he got his from. But for me, I mean, I just ended up with 12. And I was kind Mm -hmm. of stuck with this for a very long time. Okay. So I know Evan Turner played for the Wolves. Mm -hmm. I've seen him tweet with you and your brother a couple times, as well as on Instagram. So what's your relationship with him? Yeah, with, uh, Evan's great. He's great to me, especially, you know, Evan's been in my shoes. You know, he was mm-hmm. the number two pick, the number one or number two pick in the NBA draft. Yeah. And he went to Ohio State. He was a highly um, highly recruited, you know, guard coming out of high school. Yeah. Played with the Bulls, knows Coach Mullins. I mean, he's been in my shoes, literally. Mm-hmm. So um, every now and then I'll actually text him and ask him questions on how he does this or even outside of basketball, how he yeah. handles this and that. And so on and so forth, and obviously it's just great to have someone in at the highest level of basketball. You know, obviously guiding me through the steps that he took, and allowing me to be the best version of myself that I can be. So just having a relationship with Evan is um, it's helped me a lot. No, definitely, I can imagine how uh, beneficiary that is to you know have somebody that's walked in your shoes, give you that advice and stuff so what are your goals for the AAU season hopefully we get to have an AAU season and for the uh your senior high school season it could be personal goals team goals yeah yeah um so for AAU I just mm-hmm. want to if we have AAU I want to win I mean AAU yeah. is all about winning and winning winning have fun with your teammates mm-hmm. but in the end I want to win the Under Armour uh, so yeah. get, uh, I mean I want to win as many games as possible I want to win as many tournaments as possible I just mm-hmm. want to have the most fun with our team yeah as we, as we can the 17U team that was supposed to play now for AAU has been together since 
since we were all in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. So we were really looking forward to the season. Unfortunately, coronavirus kind of has halted that a little bit. Yeah. But I think this year we have an opportunity to do something really, really special with mm-hmm. our program and the Wolves in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so for AU, I just want to win as much as possible. And then for um, high school season, my senior season, um, my main goal is just to win as many games as possible. I want mm-hmm. to make sure that Rolling Meadows is going in the right direction. Yeah. Um, we had our first 21 season this year for the first time in almost like 30 years. Mm-hmm. I think so. I want to have another 21 season. I want to win as many games as possible. Yeah. Um, personally, I want to break the point record um, at Meadows all time. Mm-hmm. I think I'm only about like 100 points away. I want right, to, I'll be the first person to score 2,000 points if everything goes the way I want it mm-hmm. to go. And then... Um, Personally, I wanted to win Gatorade Play of the Year this year. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Adam Miller won it, which yeah. he totally deserved it for sure. Yeah. Congrats to him. But next year, I want to make sure that I get that award. That's Definitely. always been a goal of mine, um, just to walk in and have Max Christie in the gym for everybody yeah. to see. No, um, that'd be great. Definitely. Um, so, what part of your game do you feel comes easiest to you? Um, I think shooting has always come easy to me. Shooting. Um, just being able to shoot the ball off the dribble, you know, mm-hmm. off of pin downs and a fast break pull up. I mean, it always just feels like it's come easy to me. And then yeah. when my shots start to fall, the next thing that I think comes easy to me is just being able to be a, like a point guard, I guess you could say. Just yeah. being on the ball, point guard feel, seeing where your teammates are, playmaking for them. So, you know, when I'm hitting my shots and the team starts to, you know, close out on me more, mm-hmm. play close to me, I can drive by, dish it off to the corner, or finish at the rim. No, definitely, and I can even say from watching you, you have a really high basketball IQ when it comes to knowing when to take shots and when not to take shots. Um, so what part of your game are you going to try to work on the most this off season? Well, the AAU is not really off season, but, yeah, yeah. you know, before the high school season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so for sure, I always want to work on my strength. I want to mm-hmm. make sure that I'm looking the part in basketball, just being able to be explosive, bang down low with all these other, you know, big guys. And then one thing that I've really focused on is my left hand, my left hand ball handling, left hand finishing, left hand passing, just left hand in general, Mm -hmm. being able to do everything with both hands. You know, that's kind of been a weakness, especially this year in high school. I feel like I didn't use my left hand enough. Yeah. Um, So I make sure that I can trust my left hand, rely on my left hand a lot, Mm -hmm. being able to make reads, being able to come off ball screens and make, you know, tough pass, behind the back passes, so I'm going to mm-hmm. pass my left hand, um, being able to finish around the rim, just being able to be versatile in both hands and be ambidextrous. Definitely. So what has basketball taught you that carries into other areas of your life? Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest quote that I've earned, like, learned from basketball, and it mm-hmm. kind of comes from my favorite player, is hard work is talent and it feels to work hard. That's just in everything in life. You know, a lot of people are talented in basketball, mm-hmm. and it's crazy how... Like, I can't even comprehend how everybody telling me, like, yeah, they stopped working in the NBA. They feel like they've made it. Yeah. But they have other people that don't have as much talent who mm-hmm. work 10 times harder and surpass them. Yeah. So, I mean, if anything, basketball tell me that you get out what you put in. If mm-hmm. you put in enough time and if you put in enough effort, you'll get out what Definitely. you deserve. Definitely. And same thing in life. If you work after hours and you work extra hours, you will get something in return that will benefit you. So just being able to do extra and obviously work hard, harder, and hard enough in order to be at the top. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. I couldn't agree with you more on that. So who's your who's your role model? Um, In life, just role model in general, just parents. So my mom, my dad, and my brother as well, Cameron. I mean, I look at mm-hmm. the camera a lot. Cameron's always a fun person to be around. Yeah. You know, I... Just, you know, even in this coronavirus thing where I can't really be around anybody mm-hmm. except for my family, just being yeah. on camp allows me to be happy, be myself, I can laugh. Yeah. And then parents, obviously, they've taught me so much, you know, I obviously mm-hmm. wouldn't be here without them. Yeah. Um, them being able to guide me in the right direction, you know, even though they're very strict at times and I yeah. dislike it, but, I mean, look where I am now. Yeah. Um, so, just them being able to teach me how to be, not even a basketball player, just a young man in general, yeah. being able to do with respect. You know, please, thank you, um, Mr., Mrs., ma'am, sir, type mm-hmm. stuff, manners. Um, and then obviously basketball side being where I'm at, being able to shoot and everything like that. Um, so I'd say my family in general is just my biggest role model in general, just being able to, you mm-hmm. know, be myself and evolve as a person. Yeah, no, definitely. Which NBA player, I know we spoke a little bit about uh, Evan Turner, but maybe it's him, but what NBA player did you try to rock, role model your game after? Yeah, um, my favorite player in the NBA right now is Kevin Durant. 
Mm-hmm. I watch him a lot. I love Kevin Durant. I love his ability to be a, the fact that he's a six eleven guard. Yeah. Being able to make a lot of plays with the ball, you know, having killer crossovers and the pull ups and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So Kevin Durant is someone I try to mimic. I don't. I wouldn't say I try to pull my like model my game after him, but mm-hmm. I do watch him. I do steal some moves from him. Yeah. Being able to, you know, just do many things with the ball. And then another person that I am intrigued by is Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. I personally think Jason Tatum is the most skilled person in the league. Like yeah. the most skilled. Jason Tatum, his ability to create space off the dribble, his ability to finish at the rim, his mm-hmm. ability to hit step backs, his ability to just do anything in general. Yeah. I mean, he's really intriguing to watch, and he has a plethora of moves in his bag, and it's crazy. No, I mean, it's something that I want to you know, incorporate the fact to have a lot of options that I can go to mm-hmm. in a game, no matter what the scenario is. Yeah, no, definitely. So these kind of these questions, next few questions I'm going to ask you, Kind of be off topic basketball. So, what do you keep in your gym bag that might surprise people? Um, gym bag. Oh, an inhaler. I have asthma. I don't know if a lot of people have know that I have asthma. I keep inhalers with me wherever I go before workouts because you know when I work out with my trainers before this whole thing, our workouts are tough. It's not easy. You know, mm-hmm. you're breathing heavy. Yeah. And I inhaler every now and then just to make sure that I stay calm and obviously don't have asthma attacks or whatever. But, I mean, the biggest thing for me in my bag is asthma, having an inhaler, mm-hmm. um, and just being able to breathe right when I work out. Okay. So if you didn't play basketball, what sport do you think you'd play? Um, I played football when I was younger. Flag football, not tackle. But I played mm-hmm. flag football when I was younger, and it was really fun. Yeah. Um, I was a wide receiver. You know, I always ran out and come mm-hmm. obviously. But I think... If I really practice football, I'd be really good at it. You know, just my height and my long arms, just being able to catch and uh, stuff like that. So, football probably. No, definitely. So, sometimes every once in a while when you get on live, I pop on for a couple minutes. I noticed you play a lot of video games. So, (laughs) what's better, Xbox or PlayStation? (laughs) Um, I've played Xbox my whole life. So, personally, I'm going to say Xbox is better than PlayStation. I have a PlayStation. I've never really enjoyed PlayStation as much as I have Xbox. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Xbox is much more organized and just more fun to play with. Yeah. Uh, So I'd say Xbox is better than PlayStation. Okay. Yeah, I've also always had an Xbox uh, as well. So what's your favorite shooter hooping? What's my favorite what? Sorry. Sorry. What's your favorite shooter hooping? Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. My no, favorite shoe to hoop it mm-hmm. um, are probably Curry's. I played in Curry's for a long time. You know, I've touched by Under Armour and the Illinois Wolves. I have yeah. a bunch of Curry's. Um, so I play with a lot of Curry's. Curry's mm-hmm. are a lot. Um, after Curry's, I have to say maybe um, KD's mm-hmm. or Kyrie's. Both yeah. of them are very, very comfortable. But um, probably the most worn shoe that I play are Curry's. So yeah, Curry 7s, Curry 6s. Okay. What's your favorite off the court shoe? Uh, favorite off the court shoe. I recently, not recently, but like Christmas time, mm-hmm. I recently got my first pair of Yeezys. Oh, nice. I've Yeezys a lot. Um, I have nice. few pairs now, but um, those are by far my favorite shoes to wear off the court. I mean, mm-hmm. they're just so comfy. They yeah. look nice. Um, yeah. I've wanted Yeezys for a very long time. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, nice. So, if you could spend the day with one celebrity, who would it be? Uh, one celebrity. Kobe Bryant, probably. Unfortunately, Kobe Bryant isn't with us anymore. Yeah. Uh, but Kobe Bryant, I would just want to ask as many questions as I can. His work ethic was none like we've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. I want to know his routine, what he does. You know, obviously Kevin Durant's my favorite player, but I feel like Kobe Bryant is someone like that's so valuable to the game of basketball and someone that you just can't turn down. You can ask him so many questions. You can ask him how he does certain things in life as a businessman how he works hard, how hard he mm-hmm. works, how he does it, what he does. I mean, it's just so many questions you can ask Kobe Bryant, I feel yeah. like. And you can never, ever not ask enough questions to him. So that's someone I'd probably um, want to uh, spend a, a day with. Yeah, no, definitely. Even for me, when I played basketball, Kobe Bryant was always, you know, my favorite player and a role <laughs> model. He just, like, really impacted the game in, in so many ways. So just to, like, wrap things up here, my last question is, you know, what's your why? Like, what what drives you? What yeah. pushes you to be that elite player and get up every every day in the morning to do those workouts 
to go on those long runs, to, you know, do that extra thing? What, what's yeah. your drive? Um, I think my drive really came in when I realized that I can actually do something with basketball. Mm-hmm. Being able to play at the highest level, hopefully, is my goal. And just being able to, you know, wake up every day and pursue that goal every day. Mm-hmm. Being able to take steps every single day to get to where I want to be, my dream. Mm-hmm. You know, I sacrifice an ungodly amount of things mm-hmm. in order to be where I'm at. You know, yeah. I sacrifice time with friends. I've sacrificed hangouts with friends. I've sacrificed Friday nights. I've sacrificed football games on Fridays. But I've sacrificed so many things. I've sacrificed prom. I've sacrificed homecoming. I've sacrificed everything. Mm. I mean, there's so many things I could go on about. I mean, it's crazy yeah. about just how much basketball demands of you. Mm-hmm. And I've just sacrificed so many things, and I have to make sure that I can do what I need to do in order to get to the goal that I want to get to. So yeah. I'd say my why is just being able to actually do something with my dream, being able to actually achieve my dream. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I wake up every day just to make sure that I can be the best version of myself. Yeah. You know, um, you know, all the, all the negative influences that try to bring me down, those drive me, you know, mm-hmm. the fact that they don't believe me, the fact that they think I can't do this, this and that, mm-hmm. um, it just makes me want to prove them wrong. Yeah. I mean, they don't know anything about me. Mm-hmm. They know very little about me. And I want to show them that, you know, you don't really want to talk trash about me. I mean, yeah. you can't, but it just won't affect me. It'll, yeah. You, if anything, it'll make me want to achieve my goal more than mm. you making me try to take a step back. Yeah. Um, so if I were to say my why, it's just being able to actually do something with it. Yeah. No, definitely. That was a, a great answer. Keep working hard. You know, you can achieve it. You can get to the NBA one day. And keep putting in the work like you are. Thanks so much for taking the time to be on this live interview with me. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you also for supporting my page yeah. and things of that nature. Um, if you haven't already checked out Max Christie's Junior Mixtape, go do that. It's on my YouTube channel. Stay safe um, during this virus. Looking forward to getting to film you next year. And uh, yeah. thanks again. I appreciate it. Yep, sounds good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, no problem. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Thanks.